Hello, Openboxes users. In this video, we will talk about cycle count reports. Um, we will talk about how to run the cycle count report, how to update your Excel sheet, and also how to import the results of your cycle count after you have completed the physical inventory count. So starting off with why should we perform cycle counts? Um, this is a great way to keep Openboxes or your inventory system in track and in sync with what you actually have physically at your warehouse and your storage um, basically allows us to confirm that our inventory in the system is accurate. And we can also not use the system to its full advantage if the inventory is, in, is not consistently correct. So it allows uh, smaller batches of goods to be counted throughout the year, which reduces inventory variances in open boxes. It also makes sure that the inventory is accurate and we're maintaining that accuracy. And also when we identify, we can correct those errors um, in inventory in open boxes. So overall, it increases the overall accuracy of information in open boxes, allowing us to trust the data more. Um, we should perform cycle counts regularly on a rotating basis to always stay on top of inventory quality. So let's get started with how we can run the report to start the cycle count process. So to run the report, we can go to reporting and we have a cycle count report. Give it a couple of seconds to run since it does have a lot of information. It can take a little time uh, for it to fully load. Awesome. So once you are on the report page, there are instructions at the top as well on how you can use the cycle count report if you ever need uh, help uh, before or when you're performing this exercise. You can also do a search if there are products that you want to look at before you download the report. Once you're ready, you can download the report. Again, give it a couple of seconds because it's going to download all the information in the table into an Excel sheet. So once it is downloaded, let's open this uh, file and just make sure you click on enable editing. That way Excel allows you to actually add information, change information as needed. So here we have uh, multiple columns. First, we have the product code. We have the product name. This is the name that we enter in open boxes when we create or update that product. So if you see that some products need to be updated, you can go ahead and do that in open boxes itself. We also have the lot number. So this displays all the lot numbers for the products that um, have been recorded in open boxes. Uh, we also have expiration date, all the bin locations, the quantity on hand as present in open boxes. Now there is a physical quantity on hand column as well. And you'll notice that this is blank because this is where we will enter the results of our physical count of the inventory. So for example, for EY64, open boxes shows 1440, but if we, when we actually go physically count, if it is 1440, then we will just enter 1440 here. If not, then we will enter the different number, let's say 1000. Now, noticing that it is different from what is in OB, we can add a comment to kind of help us reference on what might have happened. So that's the purpose of physical quantity on hand column. We also have the comment column. Uh, for us to add information. We have product family. Once you start adding a uh, product family and assigning products to the families, the product family name will appear here. We have a category uh, column as well. Formularies, ABC classification, which we do not currently use in Dominica, so we can just ignore that. And the status, and also the last inventory date. So we have a lot of products in this file and we are not going to be performing physical counts for all of the products. So we should select um, some products to actually perform the cycle counts. Um, you could select 10 products to count every week. So let's select 10 products. To make it easier for selection, we can add a filter. So let's go up at the top navigation bar under sort and filter, we have a filter option. Once we click on that, we can see that there's filters being added on the heading. Now there are multiple ways we could filter and select products. You could filter by category. So let's say this week I want to count uh, products 
that are lab supplies. So um, by default, all of the categories are selected, but if I click again on select all, it unselects everything. And then I can just select lab supplies. So these are all the lab supplies. Um, you can, there are still a lot of products. So to narrow down the search even more, let's go ahead and add maybe the last inventory date. So here then I can select the dates that are the earliest or meaning that they haven't been counted for a while. Um, so if you wanted to, you could only select, let's say um, the last count date was 2022, um, the first couple of months of 2023 um, and even May. So for this exercise, I'm just going to select all and we are going to go through the products and see which ones we want to select. So just to make sure when you're selecting products, uh, make sure that you're selecting all the lot numbers and all the bin locations for that one specific product, because we want to count the product in all of the locations that it is stored at CMS and not just for one bin location. That way, when we import or update the inventory in open boxes, we have the complete information. So let's see. So this is one product, Ziploc four by six. This is another product. So we have two products so far, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So anything under AK49, uh, we don't want to count. So you can either just select all of this and hide it or simply delete it. So you can do your control shift and arrows to select the rest of the products on this screen. And you can delete them. Okay. And um, you deleting the products from this Excel sheet will not make any difference in open boxes. And so it's undoable as well. So don't worry if you're deleting some products here. So um, that those are some of the ways you can select your products. But if you know that some of the products you want to count this cycle count, you can go ahead and just select those products from this Excel sheet. Or if you can use your understanding of your inventory, for example, you're not confident that there's accurate inventory data in open boxes for some products or categories. You can just select those categories or select those products and continue the cycle count process with those, just making sure that you are selecting all the bins and all the lots for the products that you are choosing to count. Okay, so if you are doing this in a laptop and you are able to carry your laptop with this Excel file open, great, you can do that. However, if you do not have a laptop that you can carry to the uh, storage rooms, um, you can just print these as well. Uh, print this page as well so you can make those notes um, on these columns and add comments as necessary. So to print, let's go to file and print. So we might have to adjust the orientation because as you can see, we only have the product code, product name. Um, if I go to the other pages, it looks like it's broken down with, within multiple pages. So under settings, there is an orientation option, um, select landscape. Even with the landscape, it looks like not all the information is fitting on the page. So what we can do is we can adjust the column widths to make sure that all of the columns are fitting on this uh, print. So let's go back. So let me adjust the width of the product name, product code, uh, lot numbers we need. So I'm just going to make sure that I see the complete lot numbers. Um, as you can see here for expiration dates, the format isn't how we would like it to be. So let's adjust the format of expiration date, selecting the entire column, going to the top bar um, here under format, I will select short date. So now it's in the format of month, date and year. Uh, bin location, we also want to see, so making sure that it is visible. Uh, physical QOH and comment. Um, anything after comment, we don't really need to perform physical counts. So we can just leave those as is. 
So let's go back to File and Print. So now we can see that all the columns are visible in the print as well. So you can print this out and then go to the storage room to perform your physical counts. And you can add the physical QOH here as you perform the counts, add comments if you see discrepancies and some explanations as why it might be different. But if you have your laptop with you, then you can just enter that here directly. All right. So if you, when you are performing the physical counts or after you are, perf you have performed the physical counts, uh, you would add that information into the sheet. Um, there can be instances where some of the lot numbers for the products have not been entered or recorded in open boxes yet. So to enter those into the sheet, what we could do is just add insert a row. Let's say for KQ29, Uh, this lot number was not recorded as of yet in open boxes so i'm going to add that um, if you have an expiration go ahead and add that um, if you know which bin location this uh, product is in which you should if you've performed physical count you can add that here as well and here ob count qoh you can leave blank under physical qoh you would enter how much you counted let's say 50 Common, you can add a uh, found quantity. Um, there can be instances where the OB quantity on hand and physical quantity on hand do not match. So for example, microscopic slide frosted, this specific lot number OB has 1444, but we only counted a thousand. So we would enter a thousand on physical QOH and add comments not find so that's the process we would basically just add lines if needed enter physical qoh if you cannot find quantities on a specific lot number you can enter that as a zero and add comments as to why you would not be able to find you were not able to find it so at the end of this exercise all of the physical qoh would have some information on them based on what you counted either zero or more than zero okay so i have entered the physical quantity on hand for all of the products that i have on my screen um, so next comes the reconciliation part with open boxes so for some of the products you might want to just do individual reconciliations in open boxes such as for example Microscopic slide frosted this lot number, or not that one, um, this biohazard bags, red plastic. OB said 770, but the physical is 700. Uh, the reason is because one of the requisitions has not yet been entered in open boxes. So this is an instance where you might want to just create that requisition um, as to where once that requisition is shipped, the quantity will update and um, update to the actual quantity once that transaction has been completed. So this is an instance where you might want to perform that uh, individually. When you do do that, just make sure that you delete all of the rows for that product from uh, the sheet. That way, when we do an import, it does not overwrite whatever changes you have you just made. So you can just select the rows that you want to delete, uh, right click and delete row. So then we're just leaving the items that we want to update in open boxes via import. And even if there are um, products that have no change between the OB quantity on hand and physical quantity on hand, you can just let them be because open boxes will still record that as an inventory count, which will in turn update this last inventory date, which can then um, uh, help you make decisions on which products you should count during your cycle counts. All right, so this is the information that we have and we want to update open boxes via import because that is faster and easier than updating all these stock cards one by one. So let's take a look on how to do that. So to import inventory data, we need admin or super user permissions. 
And when you, if you have those permissions, go to configuration. Under administration, we have a data import option. So here um, we can import different types of data. We have one that says inventory. So let's download the inventory data. Open it. Enable editing. If you notice, uh, the columns are pretty much the same as the cycle count report columns, only that no other columns are present after the comment section. So what we can do is we can select all the data in this file and delete. And what we will do is just copy and paste the information that we actually want into this inventory file. So this is the file that we made our physical counts on. So let's select until comment. Control C and Control V. So let's just make sure our formats are correct. The date looks good. Um, and make sure the OB count and physical QOH are correct from what you actually entered. If you have to enter comments, you can do that as well. Um, and let's save that before you import. So saved. So now to import inventory data, you must first select a date. So today is the date that you performed the inventory count. So that will be recorded as the last inventory count date for all the products. Then choose the file that you just saved. Select inventory because that's what we're importing and upload. So once you upload, you can then review the information here. And if there are issues with your file that will be conveyed here, but it looks like this file is ready and the data is ready to be imported. If you want to look for a specific product, you can also use the search bar here, CJ36. If you want to look at everything, just leave that blank. Once you are sure and you are ready to import this data, just hit finish and that will update the inventory for all the products along with the bin location, the lot numbers, the expiration dates, the quantities, whatever you've changed or updated that will be depicted in the inventory in open boxes. So just make sure that the inventory is accurate and um, it's good to go. So that is how you perform cycle counts from uh, downloading the report using the Excel a file to perform those counts and track the changes to importing um, the inventory data into open boxes. Thank you for watching.